Hi, I'm Glenn Southern. I'm the Creative Director at Sparkle VFX in Liverpool. Um, this session is going to set you up ready to um, model the little uh, demon. Um, what we're going to do first of all is I'm going to take you on a quick tour of the basic tools of Silo. I've opened up the software that you've got on the from the uh, from the disk, and I haven't altered it at all. I tend to use a, a, a customized menu system. Um, this is exactly as it is out of the box, so this should be exactly the same um, as you're looking at. I'm on a Mac, so when I say command, that will be Alt. So generally, most of the commands are the same, and you can work them out usually. So when you open the screen you may have this view or you may have this view which is a multiple view so you've got a perspective mode here a perspective view here a front view and a right view here and you can obviously have all the views as well so if I use the space bar and my cursor is in the middle of a, any of those screens then it will select that as a full screen so what we're going to do is hit space bar and go to the the center of the perspective now if I hold down alt and then use the first of all the middle mouse button I can pan left and right if I use the right mouse button I can zoom in and out and left mouse button I can rotate so that's very crucial so you need to get used to the left middle and right by holding alt and that'll give you some access to movement around your object so if I right click and that'll give me access to some basic shapes tools and objects so if I click cube that will give us a cube in the center. Now what I want to do is first of all select a face which if I go to see at the bottom here you've got different types of selection so I want face which is that one and then I've got this manipulator in the middle manipulator in the middle that will allow me to move like so on the three different axes Y being up, X being left and right and then the blue one which is the Z in and out of the screen so we class this as the front now just for purposes of seeing it from the side I'm going to hit Z and then scale down that's an extrude that's one of the basic commands that we're going to use uh, you can pull it from the menu at the top up here but it's best if you start learning these keys straight away so that was Z and then I scaled it down and pulled it out and the reason I've done that is to show you that if you look at this view now you can see that smaller polygon at the front so that shows you you're at the front spacebar again and go down here and you can see now we're looking at it from the right so that's the Z axis now is left and right and you can see this is the front that we pulled out like so okay and we'll switch back just moved it too far out That was with messing around. Now, while we've got it in, got it in that view, what we'll do is we'll, we'll leave that cube to give us a reference from the to help us reference the front and the right. And we want to put in a reference image that we're going to build our model based off. So, if I go to the front and I go up to display here and then set viewport image, and then what we want is I prepared the images earlier so we want to take the front image and load it in like so spacebar go back and click on the right one and go display set viewport image images that we want and we'll go right like so now as you can see there on this side there's nothing in the perspective and there won't be in the perspective at all you'll never get these images in the perspective but you will have the references that we're going to build from in the front and the left like so so I'm going to set up how to make um, our little model um, and what it and basically set us up ready for the rest of the sessions so I'll just delete this cube for now I'll right click and I'll give us another cube and then what I'm going to do is go up to display object display mode up here and I'm going to go to ghosted wireframe like so and the reason we do that is as you can see you can see through it so let's move it up along the Y you can see now if I'm moving it in the perspective it's reflected in the others and then also we're going to move it out along the Z axis like so so it's in the middle of the head and then we'll scale that head up like so scale is E you can see that 
if you're ever not sure you've got them down at the bottom here points edges faces object and over here you've got the different types of manipulators and then selection mode which we'll cover later on so go back to the object keyboard F for full object mode so we're selecting the whole object like so and then just tweak that to make sure it's in the right place for the head you can see I'll zoom in on the head now like so now I'm going to go to edge mode so you can see that that's edge mode because obviously the edges have been selected and I'm going to use shift and X and that's split all the way around like so and this one splits all the way around there and I'm going to do something now I'm going to select one face so that's keyboard D shift keyboard D and if I double click that'll select a ring all the way around and I'm going to actually hit delete or backspace on a Mac and then that face and that face then they've all gone now and the reason we've done that is that we want to use something called mirroring so if I've got keyboard F object selected and I want to go to modify and instance mirror and you can see there what it's done is it's mirrored that half back but it's not a true half you can't select that half you see there you hear me clicking so what happens is when we select this side you can see it's reflected on this side and that allows us just to symmetrically model half of the head and if you go up into these viewports you can see why that will be a benefit to us when you select anything on the center line there it's actually quite a tiny bit off center actually the image but we're not worried about that for the moment when you select anything on that center line try and only use it vertically or left and right here on the z-axis because if you go off if you tend to come off the center axis you can get a split in your mesh which you don't want it's not a major problem but for someone who's just beginning it can be so what we'll do is we'll go back to that edge mode and run a few more splits around there like so you can see what I've done all the way around there now that's instance mirror so you can see that's um, the mirror that uh, it, you can switch that basically on and off um, and it won't uh, say it's gone Now what you can do is you can mirror it completely so just mirror geometry and the reason that works so well is because our pivot point was already on the center line see this pivot point it's already bang on the center line if you ever need to move that if you hit keyboard M it'll go white and you can move the pivot point just remember that one okay so now we've done that we've made it a full mesh I can select either side now but it still is using mirroring which is good now what I want to do already is use one of the most powerful tools in silo which is the smooth command and to do that I'm going to set it up as a mouse command and you have to do this because it's not default so if you go to editors options mouse settings and look over here to scroll and then you want to go I use you can use any you want but I use shift and scroll will give me smooth and shift smooth there we go so smooth you can see and what that means is and we'll, and we'll, sh we'll on the other side here which is the wheel that was wheel up and this is wheel down and we'll set that to undo uh, and the reason we do that I'll scroll the right way just bear with me undo so if we now hold shift and roll our mouse wheel we'll smooth parts of the model and if we roll the other way we'll undo it okay we'll get rid of that now by closing that panel down and if you look at this panel now if I select the whole object and using shift and roll the wheel it will tighten the mesh and make it smoother if I just select a few faces by switching to down here at the bottom of the screen you can see area select so I'll just select points like so and then use shift and mouse roll you can see how it's just tightening that one area now I've, I've shown you that quite early on I could have stayed with instance mirror but that is really crucial for later okay and there's one other thing that I want to show you before we move on which is if we go to selection and soft selection that now gives you an area of effect you can see on the screen here hopefully where it goes out to from 
one colour out to a red. And if I roll the wheel forward, you can see that area of effect growing or shrinking. I'll shrink it now. You can see it's shrinking and shrinking. So basically, if I have it small like so, and I move it, it affects the centre point and a little bit around the outside. If I grow that area of effect, it has a greater effect. And we'll put that into good use now. Because what we're going to do is just tweak the head to where we want it to. To do a tweak, if we just hold, just get the mouse in the right place. There we go. And shrink that area of effect a little bit with a mouse roll. Like so. Now holding down control gives you the ability to tweak which means you can move points over and over again and you don't have to stop and select each point so just hold down that control button keep changing the area of effect by shift and mouse roll uh, sorry just uh, just mouse roll I was telling you the smooth command let's go back again and look at the head from the side you can see what we're doing here it's not matching the the um, reference yet so we're going to keep using these two tools that we've shown so drag it move it along drag it now with because we're doing a type of modeling that's called subdivision modeling when we're ready to uh, see the smooth looking model we actually subdivide it uh, by using keyboard C and you can come back from that with keyboard V and always when you're modeling with subdividing as you'll see in one second if I hit C now see how it smooths it around go back and that's the squared version smooth it. and even though it looks like it's fairly close when it's in um, this mode in the unsubdivided mode once you've smoothed it it tightens it a lot more so what we can do is you can actually model and tweak in the smooth mode and that sometimes helps you get a tighter closer um, representation of your mesh. We're only going at this stage for a rough approximation. We're trying to get the basic shapes all blocked out and in this instance it's simply just to show you the tools basically for the head. You can see now go back to this other reference and it was off slightly again because we've been tweaking it. There we go. That center line of the creature being off is slightly annoying so what we'll go is display and we can select the viewport image like so and I can just tweak that image across a tiny bit it was slightly off center which is a good way to learn actually by the mistakes so and then click off and then back onto our model if you ever get stuck hit keyboard F and that's the object mode and start always start from keyboard F if you get stuck I find Let's tighten it down again. So remember, you're using control, gives you that ability to tweak, and your area of effect helps. So there we go. Now unsubdivide it, and you can see what's happening there. It looks a lot bigger than the actual model, but you've got to always remember that when we're modeling, that subdivision is the way that we'll get that smooth effect. So it will look bigger than its its final model. Keyboard one takes you back to perspective and as you can see that's quite a good representation of the head shape overall okay so what we'll do now is we'll quickly block out the rest of the body. I'm going to use a, a, exactly the same again. Um, and I'm going to use a cube like so. So right click, bring the cube in. I'm going to go display. And we'll make it go shaded. We'll check our different views with spacebar. And we'll put this as, we'll start it actually as the hips. Like so, spacebar switching it back into okay, and so we're happy roughly where it is. So, if we run a split, actually, let's turn off selection, soft selection. 
you can get very quickly get used to these keyboard shortcuts um, instead of going up to the menus but it's good practice for you and if I keep doing that then you'll see so select edge mode like so and then shift and X split it lots of different ways of doing this but this is just a very quick way and then we'll go modify mirror and we'll do a full mirror again this time and then let's put some splits in it like we did before one vertically one horizontally and then we can start by shaping it up so we're just going to select one side bring it out and I'm using middle mouse button here and that selects all the way through the mesh instead of just selecting the, the one that it can see back to the side view middle mouse button select and then move middle mouse button drag select and move middle mouse button drag select and move and the same again there okay back to this view and it's very boxy and very square but that's fine so we'll now select go to face mode you can see down here and we're going to extrude upwards now so extrude is Z like so and you can see I'm going to show you this one now and then Z again but I'm going to scale it down and Z one more time up to the top there for now and then we'll do the same at the bottom if you ever need to do multiple select you have the same as most computers it's shift gives you the ability to multiple select Z again you can see watch different views this time if you like there we go and I'm just scaling that down okay now what I will do I'm going to select all the way through there like that to show you and run a split down there I'm going to run a split down there and a split down there I'll split it all the way and then I'm going to use keyboard F object mode and then use that shift and roll the mouse forward and that's smoothed our body off for us selection soft selection back on and let's go and tweak it back to where we want it the good thing about the ghost mode is you can select through a mesh whereas normally you wouldn't be able to do that remember go bigger than the shape when you're going to subdivide if you see now subdivide tightens that mesh up we've gone a little bit too low there you can see from our reference so I'm going to bring that back up like so and let's do it from the front do it from the side sorry and then bring it back and up and then tweak by using control move if you need that area of effect just roll the wheel without holding down any buttons and that reduces the area of effect or increases it you can see what I'm doing there just get used to doing that increasing it decreasing it as needed and you can see very quickly we've shaped up that body To match the reference quite nicely it's two separate objects keyboard F and you can select them both but that's pretty much the core of the the body and the head in place already okay I'll do for session one it's giving you some of the basics we'll keep practicing those as we do the arms and legs and the tail um, and then we'll start on so once we have the basics of the shape then we'll start picking each area and go into refining the form